Hi guys, Joe here with Inky Inc, and today I've got another old card showcase to show off. Now, I don't remember the name for this game, or if it even had a name to begin with, so I'm just going to refer to it as Legacy TCG. And it's actually one of my more interesting projects, because I worked on it for about two or three years, kind of on and off in like the background as I was working on some other projects. So this is one of the few games that actually has sets, which will be indicated by this icon up here. A circle means set one. I'll let you guys know when we enter a new set and what to look for to tell it's a new set. And the game is basically just Yu-Gi-Oh. I'm not too sure what the star cost or if this is a cost or what how this works. Uh, it could be that yeah, you gain stars and pay stars to play them or you have to play a two star on top of a one star. I'm not sure because spells also have stars, so it's a, it's its own mess. So this is the first card I made. It's not in sequential order. It's not gonna go card number one, card number two, card number three. I didn't write it down and I don't, I, I obviously don't remember the order that I made these cards in years and years ago. They are in type order though. So we'll start with the brown earth cards, move on to the red fire cards, then blue water cards. So let's just get into it. This is Maple Leaf, a living leaf. He's actually, I actually really like his design. It's one of the few that's really held up over the years. Then we have Forest Pixie, which is clearly just uh, Link's pixie or fairy friend from one of the games. I think Ocarina of Time, I could, I'm probably wrong. This is Moss, I actually Base, loosely based this card game off of an old, old App Store game. I think it was called like Mages vs. Wizards or something along those lines. And it was it was a very interesting game. It, you were playing on like the earth and they had little nodes. You would go to the nodes, do a battle, and then you would get a new card at the end. It was a pretty cool game. It would be, I'd, I'd be pretty interested in trying to find that and play that again. Uh, this is Forest Hammer, which it's not even a hammer, it's just a, it's a mace. This is one of the few, like, weapon equip cards, because you can kill this to give another monster, I assume, on the field, extra power. Then we have Trent, just a, you know, basic Ent. Then we have Killer Sting, which is just straight out of Yu-Gi-Oh. Druid. There was like a little mini druid archetype. Oh, he's got question mark stat. Gain 100 attack for every spell card that's played. Oh, interesting. I don't know why he's got question marks for that though. Sporebug can attack twice, which I don't really know how well that would work with the Yu-Gi-Oh system. Ah, so I made this close to when Chaos Galaxy started posting, like when he first started posting and making his videos. So I have my version of floating rock with non-floating rock on top, only it's floating seed with non-floating seed on top. Very original, I know. Then we have Guard Turtle, and another question mark. His attack is half the defense, or half of his defense. Druid Ranger, another Druid card. Then we have Dryad, another very good design in my opinion. I really liked, I liked it as a kid. I still like it now. Hercule, like a, a big Hercules beetle. Druid Dragon, and then Elder Tree Ent, which requires a certain card to summon. I believe this is what you get with the non-floating seed. I could be wrong about that though. Then we, so because I had, was working on this throughout the years and whatnot, I actually have holiday themed cards. So if it's got this bottom border, it's a Halloween. And if it's got this bottom border, it's a Christmas. So we got Headless Golem and Green Drink, uh, Green Jingles. And we have Nature Guardian. So set one, there was a guardian and god for each type. So Nature Guardian and then the Nature God. To play the Nature God, you need to sacrifice Nature Guardian. It's interesting though, because for every star, I do remember this, for every star you had 500 points that could go in both attack and defense. So for three stars, the max would be 1500. You would think though that the gods would be a little bit better than that, but no, they're still capped at 1500. So they're not all that special. They're probably not even that good. So now we're on to set two. You can tell it's set two by the triangle symbol. And set two, 
like most of my games, is dinosaur themed. So we have a Minimimus, or Corthos, which lets you draw a card when summoned. A Stone Dino, which I think I stole from somewhere. I don't remember. It might have been from Chaos Galaxy. Or Yu-Gi-Oh! One of the two. Gratinosaur. I used Jurassic World, uh, one of their Jurassic World games, probably the mobile game, to get some dinosaur ideas. And so that's why some of these names are pretty out there because they're using lesser known dinosaurs for some reason. Then we have Stegopimax. Love the name, hate the design. Then we have Superzor, Pachysaur, Groku Sloth, Paradean, and then Cephalosaurus, which is everyone, I'm pretty sure every one of my card games has like an Ankylosaurid type creature in it. So this is the Ankylosaur of this game. Surprisingly, though, it's based off of Euoplocephalus, which is a cousin to the Ankylosaurus, or, well, related to some degree to the Ankylosaurus. Shunezu, which is like a long neck with a club tail. The first tree, and then here's the Halloween card. Shadow Stalker. It might be kind of difficult to see, but the idea is that it's like this weird serpentine dragon thing in, like, shadowy mist. And then Primal Nature King. So set two, instead of a god, they had a, a primal king. Same stats as the gods, only it doesn't require something to sacrifice. So arguably this is power creep. Not a bad design though, like the six legs. Now this is set three. Set three has a square. And set three introduced some new gimmicks. You had prime versions of cards so this is prime guard turtle so to play a prime version you had to i'm pretty sure either discard or play it on it's basically it's basically like silver boosting in phytora speaking of phytora if you haven't heard or seen you can go and print out your own phytora cards there you can go to my channel description or channel banner and there should be a link a google drive link there just click that and you got everything you need to to play phytora or to just print out the cards to have a collection of them i freaking love having physical copies of a digital only card game it's awesome shameless plug i know but i thought i'd just stick it in there real quick so prime cards are essentially silver versions or equivalent to the silver versions of phytora it also introduced a new type uh, which we'll get into way at the end. So it, that new type has the least... It, in fact, it's only got four cards. Because I, I never finished set. So this is Prime Trent. Gatsu Giant. Druid Knight. Which is probably the coolest druid. And then Mud Man. So set two would have a Halloween special card. And then set three would have a Christmas special card. And then a lot of... Some of the cards don't have a symbol. I would forget to draw them occasionally. I think Earth or yeah, nature or earth or whatever had the most set three cards. And then the rest usually have like four to three. So then we have, this is the fire type. So we have wisp, lava lizard, spelled incorrectly. Fiery battle axe, this is the same thing as the forest hammer, only it's a little stronger. Flame pig. Interestingly, I think every type had a pig except for earth. Royal knight. Just like a super knight that can't attack other fires. Magma warrior, which is just stolen out of Hearthstone. Serpent, Serpent, Dragoon. Pretty cool design, actually. Dragon Mage. Dragon Mage was one of my favorites as a kid. I think its design is pretty bad nowadays, though. <laughs> Flame warrior, on the other hand. I don't know what I was on, but god damn, is this a great design. With, the, with his, like, weird diamond... Dual blade, it's so cool. I really do love Flame Warrior. Then we've got its lame cousin Slayer. WXZ Dragon. I don't think Exige monsters for Yu-Gi-Oh were out by the time I was making this. I could be wrong about that. But if outside of that, I don't know where I got WXZ from. And then for the Halloween and Christmas cards, we have Red Jingles and Jackal Blitz. Probably the best 
We have the fire dragon, which is like this cool salamander person. And then we've got the arguably far lamer fire god, which is supposed to be like a cool dragon person, but just looks dumb. Moving on to set two, we've got Monoraptor, which is a weird, like that's his face. So his arms are the raptor head and the raptor tails, which is a pretty cool design concept. Raptor spine. There's a lot of raptors for the fire set too. Iriatosaurus, fire spitter, which is a really awfully drawn Dilophosaur. Aloe, Flamosaur, Titansaur. You can tell I was struggling with names for the fire types. I remember struggling for the fire type for set two. Utah Claw, Great Lava Dragoni, Sacrifice Lava Lizard and Dragon Mage to summon. Oh, that's interesting. Carnage, Rex King. Rex King looks pretty cool still. I think I did him pretty well. Here's the holiday card for the set, which is Hollow's Eve Dragon. And then we have the Primal Fire King, just a complete and utter spit in the face to the god, to the fire god. Moving on to set three, we have Fire Creep. Whisperer, which is supposed to be like mini wisp archetype, because I think there's one other wisp card. I think I was planning on adding more wisps in set three, but that never happened. And Whisperer is actually the last fire guy. So moving on to water. Skittler, which is just a Mario enemy. Panguri. Ah, here's Blue Wisp. I think the only other wisp in the game. Have Ice Pig. Sea Shield, which is a really weird design, but I think it's weirdly cool. It's like two water drops merging together. Sea Lizard. I think there was a pig and a lizard for every type, except for Earth type. I don't know why but earth type just didn't get a lizard or a pig. Then we have golden crab, which can't be attacked by fire or light cards, which is pretty interesting. Then we have duck lizard, frozen plants, yeti. And then for the holiday cards, we have killer present and thing from the lagoon. Sea guard, so here's the sea guardian and the sea god, which are like Vikings with like totems and whatnot. They're pretty cool. Moving on to set two, we have Sea Runner, which is just a speed stinger from How to Train Your Dragon. Diplocal, just like a Diplocalis. Bottom Feeder. Primal Jelly with his weird flat top haircut. Oh, no fire type creatures can attack, even yours. That's pretty cool. And we have Gator Beast, which there's a cooler gator creature down the line in the uh, gray undead type. Giant Eel. Rithorhynchus. Killer Leech, and we have Shelmanite. I really like the name Shelmanite, it just rolls off the tongue. Megalaria, which is a, a cool concept, like two shark heads making one body. Like that's, that's pretty interesting. Mosauron, which is like a Mosasaur thing, at least it's supposed to be. And then for the holiday card, we have Tugadon. And then the Primal Sea King, which is like a, like a whale flying fish thing. It's not that great looking. Sorry if you hear some fans going on. The air just kicked in. It's getting hot. Serpent Eater, which is a really, I really like Serpent Eater's design. Searchin, which is like an uh, urchin swarm thing. Then we have Prime Golden Crab. And then Crabling, which is weirdly enough, the only no star cards. Hi, editing Joe here. Uh, I don't know how I missed it, but Whisperer is also a zero cost card. Just wanted to clarify, uh, back to the regular schedule program. I think I was planning on adding more, but I never got around to it. We've got Petite Angel, which is straight out of Yu-Gi-Oh. Again, another Yu-Gi-Oh card, Barabita, and here's Flux. So Chaos Galaxy had Slush, or Slush, uh, and so in my game, I had Flux. And he's actually got a dark counterpart down the line. Buzzy Fluzzy Beetle. I really like that name. Holy Shield, kind of like a counterpart to the Aqua Shield or Water Shield or whatever it was called. Flying Pig. Zen Hao. The All Seeing Eye. Not sure why that's a light type. Sun Grazer. A little cow on a cloud. Thunder Lizard. Again, spelled incorrectly. I think all the lizards are. Warrior of Light and Paladin of Hope. I don't think these cards really went or worked well with each other or anything like that. It's just weird how I 
both of these are set one and whatnot. Warrior of Light's probably a little cooler than Paladin of Hope, only because Paladin of Hope is like this weird hat, like split them down the line and like half of them is a goat, the other half isn't, it's weird. I don't know why I didn't just make him like a goat human hybrid thing, it's uh... Then you have Cyber Cannon, which is a pretty cool design. And then for the holiday sets, or cards, we have Solar Nose and Candorn. We have the Holy Guardian and Holy God, which are loosely based off of the Madness Combat characters. Moving on to set two, we've got the Petite Draggy, which is just a petite dragon from Yu-Gi-Oh! Dimorphian, Primal Human, which is like a caveman guy. Primal Eye, which is, I guess, the primal version of the all-seeing eye. Grelike, Trope, which isn't meant to be like a movie trope, but meant to be like Tropio Nakthus. Primal Dragon, Coloborni, which I don't know, again, I don't know why it's a light type. It's very evil looking. So this is based off of the Tape Hara. So my genius self decided like, oh, a good name would be swapping the J and the T. So this is Jape Tara or Hape Yara, I don't know. And then for the holiday card, we've got Horn Terror, which is a very not good card. <laughs> it looks cool, looks really cool, but its stats are awful. And then I'm not too sure why this is the Primal Holy King. He doesn't look holy to me. Moving on to set three, we've got Time Box, which kills all enemy creatures on the field in three turns if it survives, which is pretty cool. Zen Orb and Cuddles. I believe there's a dark version of Cuddles as well. And then Prime Thunder Lizard. It's a pretty cool design. Moving on to the last real creature type. We've got Scully Head, just a skull. Lost Spirit, Zulf, which is the, I guess, negative version of Flux. Kaboomly, or Bomly. Cannon Turtle, Unliving Pig, Corruptor. Now this one, and there's another card in set two, which are kind of like the same aspect. I think I was gonna make another one in set three, like this this gimmick of something coming out of a human, but Corruptor looks so good with like the, the spirit coming out of the guy's body. It's so good. This is one of my favorite cards. Carno Rex, just like an undead T-Rex. Usually undead types in games and in my card games tend to be my favorites. I like skeletons and un undead things. Night Wolf which is interesting because you have to play it in defense mode and then flip it to attack. Darkness Knight, another really cool design in my opinion. It's just, he's so edgy, but like in the cool edgy way. Fossil Rex, which I don't think is as good looking as the other like bone cards that I had in the, the old, the other card showcases that I did. Zillorian, which is, I think, just a Zillow beast from Star Wars. And then the holiday cards are the Ghosts of Hallow's Eve and Christmas Nightmares. Pretty cool designs. All the, all the holiday cards are pretty good. Unfortunately, can't be, the same can't be said for the Undead Guardian and Gods. They are very troubled indeed. Moving on to set two, we have Gigamite, which is just like a big bug. Macaruchinia. Uh, if you've ever seen Ice Age, uh, the giraffe elephant things, that's what this guy's based off of. Udo, which is a dodo. Spore Hive and Sunken Hive, which are Sunken Colony and Spore Colony from StarCraft. StarCraft 1 specifically. Caprocus, this is that cooler crocodile that I was talking about earlier. Bear Roaring Rin, which is like a terror bird. Morthirum and Rissotherum, which are two rhino-like creatures. One's more attack-oriented, the other's more defense. Terragirion, it's weird. So like, it's a it's a vulture, but inside of the vulture's mouth is like a human head. And like the vulture's head is either dead or like a mask or it, it's weird. I don't know what I was thinking with this card. Uh, this is Mouth Leech, which is not as cool as Corruptor, but still pretty cool nonetheless, with like the leech coming out, like the super big leech coming out of the mouth. Dodike, which is a pretty cool arm, like armadillo thing. The holiday card is Wendigo, and here's the primal undead king. That is one weird beaver motherfucker. Moving on to set three, we have Eyefish, which is just straight out of Subnautica. Big Bone, 
It's a big bone. Prime Kaboomly, Bomly, I don't know. And Grizzle, which is the dark version of Cuddles. And Prime Zolf. Interesting that Flux didn't get a Prime version. So I'm just going to speed through the spells because I'm not going to read them. Their abilities don't really matter. We've got Kame Fireball, Small Book, Whirlwind, Swarm Attack, Moth Powder, Unknown Magic, Rebirth of a Warrior, which uses Flame Warrior in its card art. I don't like to use, you know, like my creature card art for spells or whatnot reuse card art because I usually have a hard time redrawing the character. Secret of the Floating Seed. So this is Sacrifice Floating Seed with Non-Floating Seed on top and Summer Elder Tree. Yeah, those two were connected. Black Hole, which is just a Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, Yu -Oh card. The Trick and Treat and Jolly Spirit for the Holiday cards. Let you pause those if you want to read them. Guardian Snipe, which lets you kill a guardian. And this is the only purple spell creature thing. Uh, so it, somehow you have to have Guardian Snipe to summon, whether that's in your hand, whether you discard it, whether it's in your discard pile. Don't know, doesn't matter. This is the Great God, supposedly the strongest card in the game, yet it still has the exact same stats as all the other gods. Moving on to set two, we've got Living Cloth, Song of Fire, Food Source Found, Future Warp. I kind of struggled with the spell ideas for set two. Small with power and making them like dino related. Twin Spires, which is pretty cool that the laser beam's like going between the two spires. That's pretty cool. Gorgon's Eye. Meteor Strike and Ice Freeze, which are like extinction cards. And then the set or the holiday card for the set is Ghost of a Chance. You're in like a haunted house with a flashlight and you see something pass by. Alpha Extinction, which kills all primal kings. Then for set three, we've got to sword or not to sword. Big Book. Hand of Doom. And Dominate. Now these are the last four cards in the game. These were the, uh, like, a new faction added. They were like totem based. I I had just got started getting into Hearthstone when I was working on this set, and I really I really liked the Shaman when I played it. So I made some cards based off that. We got Totem Summoner, and for some reason there were Totem spell cards too. So this is Basic Totem, which lets you draw a card every. Or wait, okay, so I guess you played this and it 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 just stayed on the field. Fire Totem. And the last card, Totem Blast. So that's everything I've got for this card game. Again, there's no name, so I'm just gonna refer to it as the Legacy TCG. There's a lot of designs in this that carry over to some of my other games. And part two will be the remake version of this game. The remake will really only share designs. A lot of the gameplay elements will be completely different. And yeah, that's all I've got for today's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.